Hare Krishna, everybody. Thank you very much for joining today. Uh, and I want you to seek uh, the blessings of the Lordships and the devotees so that we can share something. It's a very special day today. Uh, it's known as Janu Saptami. And we'll describe that, what that's all about. And it ties in quite nicely with the Sanatana Dharma course as well. So uh, just a quick uh, recap. We've uh, covered uh, these uh, topics over the last 16 weeks. Uh, last week, we did the samskars. So today, let's look at uh, this festival. It's all about actually Ganga, uh, Ganga Devi, Ganga Mata. So. Uh, there's a really amazing verse in the Garga, uh, Garga Samhita, uh, and it goes like this: Shri Yamuna Vacha He Gange Tvam Tu Danyasi Sarvam Brahmanda Pavani Krishna Padaja Shambhuta Sarva Lokaika Avandita. Shri Yamuna Devi, Shri Yamuna Vacha, she said, "Oh Ganga." You are fortunate. You purify all the universes. You were born from the Lord's lotus, Lord Krishna's lotus feet. Every bow, everyone bows down before you alone. So, um, very appropriate uh, words. Now, um, the source of Ganga, we just uh, read from Lord Krishna's lotus feet. According to Gaga Muni in the Gaga Samhita, Yamuna Devi and Ganga Devi are gopis engaged in Krishna Leela. So we have two famous rivers uh, in Bharat, uh, Ganga Mata and Yamuna. And they actually in their spiritual forms are made servants of the Supreme Lord. According to uh, some spiritual commentators, their expansions of Vishakha. Vishakha is a very close associate of Radha and Krishna. Krishna desired that both Yamuna and Ganga appear in the material world for the benefit of the fallen souls. Now there's a river called Viraja, which divides the material and the spiritual worlds, from material world from the spiritual world. And this, again, this river is an expansion of another gopi, Viraja. So at one point I am, oh, let me take that thing off first. Uh, yeah, please. Thank you, thank you. So um, at one, one seminar, I'd love to do this, uh, the structure of the spiritual and the material worlds. It's a little complex. And we did it over, I think, a 10 seminar session. And I, I, I can, we can do it in half an hour. It, it, it's a really fast ride through the different aspects of the spiritual world and the different aspects of the material world. So I'd love to do that. Anyway, this Viraja River is the boundary between this material world and the spiritual world. So uh, beyond this Viraja river is a spiritual world, which is indestructible, eternal, inexhaustible, unlimited. It is this supreme abode consisting of three fourths of the Lord's uh, opulence. So we'll talk more about that when we actually cover that subject. Gangamata, how she appears in our world, um, is described in many scriptures, uh, especially the Srimad Bhagavatam talks about it. Vamandev, who is the fifth avatar of, of the Das avatar. So again, the Das avatars is perhaps something that we may cover next week because it's the birthday of one of the avatars next Sunday, uh, Nashinga. So we may well look at um, the Das avatars or, or we'll, at least in brief. So the fifth avatar is Vaman. So much kach para nasin Vaman, that's the fifth. He appeared in Treta Yug and he appeared as a young Brahmin boy. Uh, it's commonly known as a dwarf, but actually he wasn't a dwarf, he was a young boy. He approached the Bali Maharaj, who was the ruler of the whole universe, who was a demon actually, he took over the whole universe. And uh, while Bali Maharaj was performing um, a sacrifice, and he, this boy, uh, the Vamandev, sorry, the Lord, appeared before Bali Maharaj as a Brahmin boy. That's, although Bali was a demon, Actually, he wasn't. Uh, actually, he was a devotee. So when the Lord came and he begged for alms uh, for three steps of land, Bali said, yes, of course, it's three steps of land. I can give you a whole planet. <laughs> Why just three steps of land? Anyway, the first step, um, 
uh, Vaman Dev expanded, covered the whole earth. Second step, he covered the whole universe and he, his, his toe actually pierced the covering of the universe. And from that covering descended uh, a drop or two of the Viraja River. And that's in the form of Ganga. Um, so that's very, very interesting how this history is actually described in many of the Puranas. So this water flowed into the universe, came uh, both actually from Yamuna and Ganga. This is according to Gaga Samhita. With Sri Ganga entering that opening, the Yamuna, the best of rivers, then came to the unconquerable Lord's abode of Vaikuntha in the planet of Maharaj Dhruv. Again, something that we may be able to cover in a future session. Together, Yamuna and Ganga first flowed onto Dhruv Lok, the planets of the seven sages, the Saptarishis, and then purified the heavenly planets. And later they parted in different directions. Um, Yamuna flowed through the Mount Kalindi, hence why she's known as Kalinda, sorry, hence why she's known as Kalindi, and then through the Kanda forest. And eventually she went through Vrindavan and became one of the uh, principal, eight principal wives of, uh, of uh, Krishna. Ganga, however, she didn't come to earth. She remained flowing through the heavenly planets. And the reason she didn't come was she knew the earth would not be able to tolerate the force of her flow. And she also was a little tentative to come because she knew sinful men would um, take advantage. They would bathe and leave her, their sins in her water. So she didn't want to accept all those sins. <laughs> anyway, so what happened? Uh, back in Treta Yuga, uh, in the kingdom of Ishwaku, there was a king called Sagar. He did a horse sacrifice. He had 60,000 sons. This horse was actually stolen by Indra and hidden near Kapil Muni uh, in Patalok, which is in the nether regions. Now, when um, uh, they, they started looking for the horses, horse rather, the 60,000 sons, and they offended Kapil Muni. Now, Kapil Muni is an incarnation of the Lord. He was very powerful. And he, uh, just by uh, their behavior, somehow they, uh, they were burned to ashes from fires emanating from their own bodies. It wasn't that Kapil necessarily killed them. It's just his tapasya was so strong, they disturbed it. It just happened that they uh, ended up uh, effectively dying. And Kapil, uh, many people then tried to do tapasya to free these 60,000 sons, right? Um, eventually, there was somebody called Bhagirath. Now, Bhagirath is one of the ancestors of uh, King Sagar. I think their, their grandfather uh, uh, are these uh, sons, basically. Anyway, Bhagirath, did such amazing tapasya, he pleased Ganga Mata and he promised her, if you come, he will petition Lord Shiva to break Ganga's descent by catching her on his head. And he reassured her that, don't worry, in your waters, there may be sinful people who bathe, but there will be many saintly people who will also come and bathe in your water, purifying you of, your, of the reactions, karmic reactions. So this is uh, <clears throat> today, Jan, Janna, Janu Saptami. That's what we're celebrating today. <clears throat> when Ganga proudly fell on Shiva's head, he calmly trapped her in her hair and let her out once she prayed for his forgiveness. <laughs> and when she came out, she followed Bhagirath. There he is. Bhagirath is there. Ganga is following. He's leading her to where her, his ancestors, the 60,000 sons uh, or children of Sagar were there. So we're gonna go on this journey today. Um, <clears throat> actually, just before that, uh, just before we go on this journey, why is it called Janu Saptami? Actually, this flow of Ganga disturbed a sage called Janu. And to show you the power of these sages this is unbelievable but this is what is written in the scriptures he drank up the ganga <laughs> he drank her up 
And Bhagirati, he prayed, Bhagirat prayed, you've drunk her, but I need her to save my ancestors. And Janu became pleased with the prayers of Bhagirat. So he let Ganga out. This is him drinking Ganga. He let her out from his right ear. <laughs> and that's why this is called uh, Janu Saptami. Saptami is seventh day. Today is the seventh day of the moon. Waiting, a vexing moon. And she's also known as Janavi, one of her names, daughter of Janu. Janu. Right, uh, let's move forward. So the Ganga um, is the life and soul of millions of people stretching some 1700 miles across Bharat. It's a huge, huge river. So it starts here in the Himalayas and it goes right the way across northern and uh, eastern India, Bharat, all the way to the west of, uh, uh, Bay of Bengal. And then it goes into the nether regions where Patalok, where um, the 60,000 ancestors were. So this is, um, the Char Dham. I think many of you will be aware of the Char Dham. Yamunotri, Gangotri, Kedanath, Badrinath. I was very lucky to be there with my family in 2010. It's the most extraordinary places uh, in the world. And I have to say, Gangotri is one of my favorite places. I, I, I always wanted to go back and hopefully one day I want to uh, spend some time there. It's just the most incredible place in the world. Anyway, uh, we're, I hope you all got your passports and your visas, OCI card, because we're going to take a journey uh, along the Ganga today. Um, and within Kali Yug, the beauty of Kali Yug is that um, even if you don't do something physically, if you do it mentally, it's regarded you get the same benefit as if you've done it physically. This is the beauty of Kali Yug. Uh, so if sometimes it's a little tricky uh, to do something physically, we can think about it mentally, spiritually, of course, uh, in a spiritual terms. And that will uh, be regarded as uh, you've actually done it. So we can't go to the Ganga, of course, because we are in the UK and uh, it's a long way there. But we can do it mentally. So we're going to do that today. So uh, these three are um, sources of Ganga. And you'll see how from Gangotri, Bhagirati comes and joins the main Ganga uh, river. And then from Kedarnath, Mandakini comes and from Badinath, Alkananda. And then they all merge with Alkananda. And this is, this is the Ganga, basically. Fascinating place. I hope one day you all get a chance to go there. So we're going to follow that route all, all the way across Bharat. And we're going to start with Gomuk. Now, Gomuk is a little further from Gangotri. And that's where the glaciers are. Oh, yeah. And before we actually do anything, this is a really nice mantra. Before we bathe, before we go into the Ganga, we chant this mantra. And you might notice many Pujaris, Brahmins, chanting this mantra, very famous mantra. And he goes like this, Om Pavitra Pavitrova Sarva Vastram Gato Piva Yasmare Pundari Kaksham Sabhya Bihantara Suchi. Whether pure or impure, or having passed through all conditions of material life, one who remembers lotus eyed Krishna, Pundari Kaksham, that's lotus eyed Krishna becomes externally and internally clean. We clean ourselves externally by having a bath, but do we clean ourselves internally? How do we clean ourselves internally? By remembering the Supreme Lord, remembering his pastimes, remembering his devotees. That's how we can clean ourselves inside. So we say this mantra before uh, go, entering into the Ganga. So as I was just saying, uh, Gomuk, this is actually very, very close to the glacier from which the, uh, the waters flow. Very cold, of course, and the air is very thin. Um, we actually made it up to Go Gomuk, which was quite a journey uh, on horse uh, or mule back. And then we walk half, the, half of it. So it's about how many kilometers was it? 
21. 21 kilometers, but we walked about. It was the only three, about three kilometers, but it was a tough walk. <laughs> so that's Gomuk. Now you can we, can, we did actually bathe here. Literally blocks of ice will flow past you while you're in the water. <laughs> so we can actually bathe there. So you can close your eyes and just imagine you're in Gomuk and we're in the water. It's freezing cold and we can dip in three times. I hope we're all doing it because you actually are doing this. Because as I said, mentally in Kali Yuga is as effectively equal to physically doing it. Then we move to further down the stream, the river to Gangotri. And Gangotri is, as I was telling you, this, the most fascinating place in the world. You can see the backdrop is the Himalayas. Here, the Ganga flows very fast. And literally you can hear the Ganga from 100 or 200 meters away. The flow is so fast. And every morning, evening, they do arti to Ganga here. And we can bathe here. There are some railings which you hold on to. If you don't hold on to it, you're gonna go down the river. Um, I remember Jainti, uh, she's not particularly fond of rivers or waters like go fast. And she was standing maybe about 50 meters away, right? <laughs> it's got very far away, but we went in and it was uh, fascinating, really amazing. Very, very cold, of course, but very purifying. So again, we can close our eyes and dive into the Ganga three times. Ganga mai ki jai, Ganga mai ki jai, Ganga mai ki jai. The whole of this area is incredible. Um, there's some uh, amazing waterfalls here. Um, there's also some very nice uh, bhajan uh, restaurants around across there. And you can be sitting in one and you'll be watching the waterfall. And it's such an amazing setting, very peaceful. Um, and it's, it's just opened last week. Uh, it closes during the winter time for six months. But last week, uh, when it was Aksha Tirtya, it opened. And I would recommend anybody to go there. So next stop is Rishikesh. Uh, maybe, oh, sorry, no. In between, we have Dev Prayag. On the way from Gangotri to Rishikesh is Dev Prayag. And it's traditionally considered to be the place where Sage Dev Sharma led his ecstatic life, ascetic life, giving birth to its present name, Dev, uh, name, Dev Prayag. It is one of the five sacred confluences in the hills. It's an important place of pilgrimage for devout Hindus. I've only been there once and we didn't actually bathe there. We just stayed the night uh, as a stop on the way to Gangotri. Dev Prayag means godly confluence in Sanskrit. As per Hindu scriptures, Dev Prayag is a sacred event of merging two visible heavenly rivers, Alkananda and Bhagirathi, to form the holy Ganga. So if we look, we're going to see. Yeah, you can just about make it out. Here there's the dark side of the river, and here there's the, the golden or the light side. So the two rivers meet there, form the holy Ganga. It is believed that a third river, the mystical Saraswati, is uh, underground and meets these two rivers at the confluence, which originates from the Manav village in Badrinath. In their Prayag, the river comes from the dust of Sri Raghunathji in Raghunath temple. According to mythology, of course, we don't believe in mythology, we believe these are facts. The footprint of Lord Ram are purported to exist at Ram Kund. Anyway, next is Rishikesh. Again, I think many of you, will you have, of you will have heard of Rishikesh. Many of you may have been there. Rishi means sadhus, saints. Kesh is the residence of saints. So Rishikesh is the residence of saints. Many ashrams here, uh, some very famous devotees have their ashrams here uh, with their students. And there's a couple of bridges here, Lakshman Rekha. No, Lakshman Dula, uh, 
very, very famous Ram bridge Jula. in Ramjula. So this is, uh, again, we can bathe here. It's not so fast, um, but it's very tank, tranquil place. Ganga mai ki jai, Ganga mai ki jai, Ganga mai ki jai. And then we come to Haridwar. Haridwar, I'm, I suspect mostly everybody would have heard of and perhaps been there. Ganga moves pretty quickly here. Uh, and it's a place where when somebody dies, they sometimes are cremated here. Uh, or if they've, like we, my mother's ashes, we brought here to Ganga. And we had the Brahmins who sit in these little sort of um, puja. puja areas. They do the ceremonies for the Shrad and the Pindan. <coughs> And we can bathe here as well. This is Harikipuri. Uh, the clock tower is very famous. And um, there's some railings here you can hold on to. Many people stay long periods of time in the Ganga here because uh, it's very relishable to be uh, serving the Lord, pleasing the Lord. So we can do the same here. Ganga mai ki jai, Ganga mai ki jai, Ganga mai ki jai. And here, actually, there are some wonderful hotels you can stay and you will be able to see the Ganga from the hotel, uh, your, your room. And again, it's sometimes you don't want to even leave the room, just want to have Darshan of Ganga. It's very beautiful. You can also feed a lot of pilgrims here uh, for literally 10 rupees, which is 10 pence. Uh, you can get uh, some sabji and uh, uh, puri. Uh, do they include a sweet in that? Like, right. Yeah, a little sweet. And you can feed like, <coughs> hundreds of pilgrims. So really, uh, they have such fantastic facilities. If you haven't been there, uh, make it a point to go there. Our Guru Maharaj stressed that you to come here to um, relieve ourselves of sins because you know we we commit so many before sins. Before going to any of the other dams. Before going anywhere else. <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Then uh, Kanpur, I haven't personally been here. Kanpur, <coughs> also known as uh, Chonpore, is a metropolitan city in the state of Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh in um, India, Bharat. Founded in 1803, Kanpur became one of the most important commercial and military stations of British India. Nestled on the banks of Ganga, uh, Kanpur stands as a major financial and uh, industrial center of northern India, and also the ninth largest urban economy in India. Today is famous for its colonial architecture, <laughs> gardens, parks, and fine quality. Leather product, we know into leather actually. <laughs> I must edit this, <laughs> which are exported mainly to the West. So, um, yeah, I haven't been there. Then the place where we have been many, many times commonly known as Allahabad, but actually traditionally known as Prayag. Um, uh, and this is a, a fascinating place. You can see there's uh, two different rivers here. Yamuna is here, she's blackish, and Golden is um, Ganga. And mm -hmm. again, this is a place where many, many people come uh, and perform Shrad. There are boats that take you in the middle of the river and there are platforms. In the, it's called the Sangam. Yeah. They have a platform there where you can uh, do the Shrad ceremony. The Brahmins are there. The priests are there. They've really got a fantastic setup. Um, and literally, they um, perform wonderful service for us. And you can bathe here as well. So let's bathe in, in Triveni. It's called the Triveni. Actually, Saraswati is hidden underground, but this is the Triveni. <coughs> Ganga mai ki jai, Ganga mai ki jai, Ganga mai ki jai. Again, a must visit place at least once in our life. It's a fascinating place. Uh, the Kumbh Mela takes place here. We went there once uh, when there was a half a Kumbh Mela. And, my goodness, it was uh, busy. <laughs> Baranasi, extraordinary place. Uh, there are many, many guards on this. This Varanasi is actually the home of uh, Lord Shiva. And he's got this famous Vishwanath Mandir there. Um, 
And it's also, uh, I think, the, the, one of the main places where uh, our own uh, prime minister, um, Mr. Modi, uh, was elected from. And they've recently renovated the city. Uh, I would love to go there again, because when I went there, it was a very polluted and uh, very uh, tough city to maneuver around. I loved the Ganga and I would just stay around here and uh, use the boats to travel to and fro the hotel. <laughs> um, but along the banks are many guts. Uh, guts are based in bathing places, auspicious bathing places. There's about 18 of them. And one year when we went, we bathed in every single one of them. Um, uh, it's good to spend some time in these holy places, maybe two, three, four days uh, at least, minimum. Um, you gain so much by meeting the devotees and associating with them and also uh, having the ocean of this tranquil holy river. And you and it's said that if, if you leave your body in Varnasi, mm. Lord Shiva actually comes and chants the name of Lord Ram in your ear. Mm. Next. I forgot to bathe. But now, again, haven't been there. Um, did, we, did we do Ganga Mai Kiche? No. So, yes, do the Ganga Mai Kiche. Ganga Mai Kiche, Ganga Mai Kiche, Ganga Mai Kiche. A must visit place. <laughs> this is Patna, we haven't been there. Uh, so it's an ancient city that sprawls along the south bank of Ganga in Bihar. In Patna, the river Ganga once flowed <laughs> along the city. It has moved five, six kilometers away from the city in the past 30 years. So Ganga has a tendency of moving. And I, I hadn't realized it, five or six kilometers. My goodness, that's incredible. <laughs> Beta. Now. Beta. Oh, yes, let's wait there. Yes, good, good. Thank you. Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai. So, nearly at the end now. So, we are now at an uh, oh, amazing place called uh, Navadweep or Mayapur in West Bengal. So, we've been through many, many states uh, Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar. Now we're in West Bengal. And this is an extraordinary place. This is a place where um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took his birth and presently this humongous temple, which is second only to the St. Petersburg temple, is being built. It's called the Temple of Vedic Planetarium um, and it's the headquarters of the Hare Krishna movement. And here the Ganga flows and it's quite fast and uh, fascinating. Fascinating place. Uh, this is going to be one of the largest uh, holy cities in the world uh, in the next uh, few decades. And uh, we we actually, in fact, here it is. Uh, we have um, uh, bought uh, offices here. Uh, we've actually bought a penthouse in uh, uh, this building. In this building here, you can just <laughs> just about make it out. Uh, hasn't quite completed yet. It's, it's a small building compared to this, but the views are something else. So okay. there, uh, ninth floor. Uh, yeah, on the ninth floor, there we are hoping to uh, set up offices to uh, do what we're doing in Bandavan, which is the education of um, the gopis, the uh, poor children. Uh, we may not limit it to gopis in this, in this area, and also Goshala, we wanted to uh, adopt a few Goshalas and a few other holy places. At least that's our plan. And you know what um, they say, if you want to make Krishna laugh, tell him your plans, you know. So <laughs> we're not sure whether it'll work out, but at least that's our endeavor. Um, so yes, we can bathe here. Ganga mai ki jai, Ganga mai ki jai, Ganga mai ki jai. I don't think many will have been here. This is uh, Prabhupada Samadhi. Um, and here they have uh, the huge deities of uh, Radha Krishna and the Astasakis and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Nikanda. Huge, when I say huge, 
seven feet. More, isn't it? It's nine, like eight, eight, nine, nine feet. feet yeah, yeah. It's huge. And then they have something like 50 pujaris uh, every day <laughs> looking after the deities. <laughs> it's a big exercise. And then finally, we come to the Bay of Bengal. I haven't, we've been to Calcutta, we haven't actually been to Ganga Sagar itself, the Bay, at the Bay of, uh, uh, Bay of Bengal. Uh, but here again, we can bathe. Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai, Ganga Mai Ki Jai. And then the Ganga flows further uh, into, um, into the Patalo, goes into the nether regions, into the lower planetary systems. So just a very quick run through of a uh, bit more information about Ganga. Her parents, Himavan, uh, this, uh, that's the Himalaya mountain, and Menavati, daughter of uh, Meru mountain, uh, adopted by Rishi Janu, <laughs> who swallowed her and then let her out. <laughs> and married to Shantanu, as we may have heard from the ba Mahabharata. Uh, and also, according to the Shiv Purana, she's also married to uh, Shilochiva, uh, mother of Devrat, who is also known as Bhishma, and also Kartikeya, sister of Viraja, that's the river we talked about right at the beginning, and Yamuna Devi, appeared in the Himalayas. Uh, Ganga is considered to is considered the sister of Parvati, or the daughter of the Himalayas. Um, we won't have time to compare her. We can do that maybe if we get another chance. We won't have time for this either. <laughs> um, seven ways of worshipping her, calling out her name. Just calling out her name is actually very auspicious. Having darshan, touching her waters, performing arti to her. Every evening and morning, they do arti in Haridwar, Rishikesh, Gangotri, uh, Varanasi, Alaba. They do arti by bathing in her, standing in water of the river, carrying clay jug, uh, dug, jugs, dug out. Dugs out, dug out of the river. So these are different ways. And uh, what does Krishna say? Of oh, flowing rivers, I am the Ganga. <laughs> so very auspicious. Uh, and she's got many names. Bhagirati, Janavi, Nikita, uh, Janukanya, Sapteshwari, Sureshwari. Bhagavati, Vaishnavi, Vishnupadi, Mandakini, 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 Gangika, <laughs> Gange, Alakananda. And what are the benefits? By bathing in her, all sins are vanquished. By pleasing her, one gains release from material bondage. From, by serving her, we're always victorious by reciting and hearing her prayers in the Kalki Puran, for example, in the morning, evening, we'll receive the association of Ganga Devi. Brilliant. So, uh, Ganga Mahiki, Jay. Wanted to stop there uh, and take any uh, questions or any comments. If you want to share any experiences that you've had, uh, perhaps uh, in, in these holy places. Nimai. Yes, Nimai. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. So Prabhuji, I had a question. So, uh, many people bathe in the Ganga and like the some factories, like um, the, uh, like some factories near the Ganga, they, they, like, they pollute so much that yeah. the Ganga is, it's really like, yeah, I don't want to say like toxic, but I want to say like it's really polluted. Yeah. Um, uh, so, is it still considered pure? Yes, it's it like is. And, our, uh, our vision uh, may be polluted, and yes, we may see all sorts of things. But actually, Ganga is always pure. Uh, okay. If we do have to have that vision, um, and unfortunately, this material world covers our vision even when we go to Bandavan, land of krishna we see so many things we see pigs everywhere we see dirt everywhere we see so many dogs this and that and we're always thinking oh but actually Bandavan is sacred if we okay. have uh, divine eyes we will be able to see uh, the real spiritual potency but because we are covered in some ignorance we we have we don't necessarily have the faith 
But yeah, it's a very good point though. I think what they're doing now is cleaning up the Ganga. It's very important because actually you could even argue like the Yamuna, it stops at a certain point because the industries use up all of the water of the Yamuna. And then after that, who knows what that water is? So, but thankfully they're doing some work to um, clean up uh, clean up the uh, rivers. rivers yeah. yeah. Okay, Prabhuji, thank you. Good point, though. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for raising. Ishwari Kishori, yes, go for it. <laughs> okay, so we have eight questions today. Okay, not too bad. <laughs> um, what is the one fourth of the Lord's opulence consisted of? Ah, this one fourth is the material world. Uh, what is described. I think you may have saw that right at the beginning of the presentation. It's described that of the spiritual world, one part of it, a small corner of it, is this material world. And some commentators guess that it's one quarter. Actually, it's a lot less than even a one quarter. So one quarter of the Lord's our opulence are in the material world. Three quarters, or the vast majority, is in the spiritual world. How does one yuga go into another? Like, how does it start? Mm. Sometimes there's a little, like after Kali Yuga ends, there's going to be a little transition time when things get adjusted because Sati Yuga is such a big change to, to Kali Yuga. People's lives extend by 100,000 years um, and they're bigger. So there's a little transition that takes place in between these two yugas. Otherwise, it's almost a straight flow from Satya Yuga to Tetra Yuga to Dwapa Yuga to Kali Yuga. What happens is sinful behavior increases as the Yugas continue. So Satya Yuga, there's no sin. Then Tetra Yuga, uh, some sin comes in, Dwapa Yuga, more sin, and then Kali Yuga is practically full of sin. I see. Why didn't Lord Shiva let Ganga come out of his hair until she begged him? <laughs> she, she was feeling a little proud that I am um, uh, the Lord's servant. I am uh, Ganga. The best I, will, I, I am the best I'm, I will purify. I am very strong and Shiva has to contain me in uh, the go oh, break the fall. Yeah. So she was a little proud and Lord Shiva so noticed that. And Lord Shiva is so kind, you know, he, he, he will destroy the pride of a devotee. Uh, big, one of the biggest problems of uh, spiritual life is we become proud. You know, I am so pure, I'm purer than anybody. I know so much, I am better than anybody. Well, if, you, if we're thinking like that, then we're, we're, we're no better than anybody. <laughs> So that's why Shiva is very kind. He will see that and he'll bring that devotee to proper consciousness in, in a nice way. Why is the Saraswati River underground? Mm, good question, now. Not sure why she's... I, I think from what I recall hmm. is because um, there was so much sin uh, occurring and she didn't want to be around but initially she was actually flowing um westwards towards rajasthan uh, and then you know because uh, rajasthan desert was drying up as well so uh, again she i think um she decided to go underground at that time good question i will try to find yeah, out we'll the try reason find the exact it. reason yeah good question never never researched that thank you are the rivers dangerous in the winter are they dangerous. dangerous to bathe in? Yes. Of course, we have to consider our bodily condition. Um, sometimes it may be so cold where you just go and sprinkle some water on your head. But generally speaking, we should try to not worry too much about the bodily condition and actually take the bath, bath. And we'll find, generally, generally speaking, we'll find that uh, we'll come out much more refreshed and energetic so um yeah I, I think in the winter you have to be obviously a little careful of your own condition but we would always recommend 
don't worry too much just dive in and then <laughs> you, you know you, you will come out a um, lot stronger so when the rivers are next to each other does the ganga and yamuna river feel different to each other yes uh the yamuna is a lot more uh, denser. denser it's softer you, it's, you know it's you it's, uh, she stays like on you caressing you yeah she stays on you uh ganga is a little less like that yamuna is uh, definitely a little bit more thicker maybe i don't know i don't know how you describe it softer are there any spiritual rivers in the rest of the world in one sense all rivers are an expansion mm. of Ganga and Yamuna mm. Mm. in one sense. So you could argue that all rivers are auspicious. Yeah. If someone got swept away in the Ganga and they passed away in the Ganga, would they be blessed even if yes. they were not spiritual in any way? Yes, mm. they'd go to the spiritual world. Yeah. Many actually do commit uh, suicide that way. It's not a good thing to do. Um, but they they will attain the spiritual world. Thank you. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Uh, Ashwin, bye. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Really superb. I mean, I'm, I'm not uh, very familiar with India. I've only been twice in my lifetime. And um, to see this journey with the talk that you've given, it makes me want to go there and Ganga Mayaki Jay. My difficulty in India is always <clears throat> two things. One is the pollution side. Correct, correct. correct. And, and the, the other one is bribery tie. Is what? I get cheated so badly. Oh. <laughs> I know, I know. That, that really puts me off. And the third thing <laughs> is general, general hygiene side. Yeah. They are the three things that put me off going to, to India. Really. Whenever they see me, they <laughs> see pound signs in their eyes. I can see pound signs in their eyes. <laughs> I absolutely agree. But my view is, look, um, Hundred rupees to a pound, you know how much they're gonna rip you off. Okay, <laughs> take it, take it, take a little bit, no problem. Yeah, it, it, it's just a principle for me. Right, right, right. I I don't like unscrupulous people. Yeah, yeah. Taking advantage of of me, and all these nice places you. that you described, um, where you can have sages do pujas and things like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're only interested in your rupees and yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it's true in one sense. But I, I look at them. I don't think that will ever stop in India. No, no. And and so either you take it or leave it. It is, mm -hmm. it is. And I, I often have a very positive view. I just say, look, you're a Brahmin. If this helps you, you're a Dharmic person. Yes, might be a bit more than what I should be paying, but. Take it. Yeah. No, no, lovely, very nice. And it, the best thing would be to to be with some guided tour where you are you are kind of protected in a way mm. down from A to Z. That that will be an amazing mm. uh, thing to do rather than go on your own. Yeah, we're, we're doing that uh, in uh, August, September, we're doing a six week tour. Uh, of course, it can be, uh, people can join whenever they want to really. But we're going to, first we're going to Gujarat um, to a health farm yeah. for about uh, 10 days. And then we're going to Mayapur, uh, which is that uh, West Bengal side. And then that will be about six days there. Haridwar, two days, three, three days, days, three days. Three days. Yeah. And then Vrindavan about seven days. Mm -hmm. And in Vrindavan, we will be with Trikal and uh, checking out everything he's doing. <laughs> so if you want to join us, you're very welcome. 
Yeah, yeah, we we'll, we will we will consider it. Not not this year because we got weddings okay. in August. Of course, yes, yes, yes. Maybe of course, next year, yeah. yeah. Of course, yeah. I think we will try to do this uh, at least once a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that'll be good. Okay. Thank you, uh, Bakula Ben. Uh, can you hear me? I yeah. can, yeah. Yeah, can. yeah. Uh, apart from two places, uh, I have visited most of the places wow. in um, uh, obviously, Gangaji. Uh, um, thank you. You are highlighting a lot of lovely things. Obviously, India is India. It's a unique, but it's a very spiritual. Yes. It is a very, very spiritual. And it's, it's, it's a good point yeah it's a good point mm -hmm. as soon as you land in india it's it's you just feel the spirituality in your within yeah. you yeah no very very <laughs> actually thank you for making that point mm -hmm. yes for all the issues around uh, what exactly what ashwinbai said i completely understand yeah, yeah. obviously i born and brought up in india and i born in dwarka so it's very oh yeah close, yeah <laughs> So it's 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 within me. Obviously, I've left India over forty years now, but I still feel really, really spiritual. As soon as I land on that, yeah, um, that country, it's just uh, you forget all your um, worries. Mm -hmm. I remember going to Dwarka when I went there, and that was thirty odd years ago. And I went into one market. I just came out of the bus stop. And I went into my, and I saw these flies everywhere. I thought, crikey, this is just too much. I went to, into the beach and I took the next bus out. <laughs> <laughs> of course, since then I've realized that uh, you, you know, we have to do some level of tolerance. We have to have some, some level austerity. of some austerity, some level of tolerance. Um, nothing's going to be perfect. And these are places where the Lord's pastimes took place, the Lord's devotees are so enthusiastically serving them and we can learn so much from these amazing souls that live there mm. and I, every time i go we learn immense immense amounts um, how they cope with their conditions it's not every, easy. every day every day condition it, it's uh, and, and oh. you learn from it rather than feeling pity of yeah. them yeah, and yeah, and we can try to help. I mean, that's what we're trying to do in Bindaran. Yeah, that, that's a uh, human nature. We like to, you know, help. make yes. possible as you know, much as possible. Yeah. But always it's a wonderful session again. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for encouragement. Okay. I, actually, uh, Paris got um, so heavy schoolwork and heavy exams coming up. So we're not going to have a quiz this time, but um, um, Ishwari and Kishwari, hopefully, we'll put something together for next time, next week. So I wanted to actually close. Actually, we are, uh, I'm just heading off to the airport as well. So need to uh, rush off anyway. <laughs> so thank you. Please um, pray for me that we reach uh, safely where we're going. And uh, hopefully, we shall see you all next Sunday. Have a safe journey, Prabhuji. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Bari. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, everybody. Hare Krishna. Thanks, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare. Krishna.